Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, it's time to take a cruise on Disney's diversity cruise. It pretty much is. Uh, we're going to talk about the Jungle Cruise refurb again now. The characters in the Jungle Cruise uh, refurb are... Uh, per Disney's diversity and inclusion guidelines, I'm sure they all have fully fleshed out backstories and they're all, well, basically check marks. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that and some chimpanzees. That's right. Because uh, we don't want to hurt their feelings. Well, they have to be represented authentically. And uh, we're going to talk about you know Disney's initiatives going forward that you're going to see this, I think, more in the parks and in movies and TV shows that they're they're going to have quotas that need to be filled on yes. some of these shows. The straight white dudes are leading up the diversity council. They're, <laughs> they're leading the charge. Yes, the two white guys named Bob. Uh, I got just, a throat named Bob. Just like Office Space, uh, oh. they were they were leading up the uh, the dual diversity councils for Disney. Now, disclaimer. Uh, for those of you who watch the channel, we actually don't have any problem with organic diversity in mm -hmm. movies or theme parks or anything like that. We think it's actually a good thing. It's a natural thing to happen. That being said, it should be organic. It should be natural. It should not be made or done just to get fist bumps. That's what this is. And PR brownie points. And Disney is making a huge deal out of every little thing they do to be like, hey guys, look how woke and progressive we are. And then they turn around and do something shitty to kind of offset. Right, right. You know. Um, but before we get into it. Before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 184,000 subs. Uh, you know, come here for your your almost daily dose of Dismal Disney. That's what we're known for. Yeah, pretty unfortunately. much. Unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so. Let me start with this because I wrote go. the story. So if you go to the story I wrote. Um, okay, if you've been following along, the Jungle Cruise is being rethemed. Um, they are, well, not rethemed, like they're giving it a new story, a new backstory that falls with their diversity inclusion initiative. And I have absolutely no problem with it. Most of the changes I don't have any problem with. Other than the fact that they seem to be cha changing out, they said that the original had a lot of ethnic stereotypes that were problematic. So their answer is to switch them out for chimpanzees, which I think seems like, you know. That wasn't really very it well, wasn't well thought, thought out. It wasn't well thought out, was it? Um, no. But, you know, no. normally when you have attractions, you occasionally get backstories, you know, or character bios. But it's not that common. I mean, usually the guests kind of put the bios together themselves from, you know, like Carousel Progress has been around for years and things like that that but there's a lot of attractions that they're not ip based they don't have like character bios like you don't know the backstory of all the characters in spaceship earth for example and things like that but the jungle cruise guys each character is diverse and has a backstory so you're well aware of what the backstory is now we had a picture today what started this whole thing was today uh zach ridley on instagram who's trying to be joe the new joe roadie obviously um he loves to get attention and he loves to put sneak peeks up on his instagram so you forget about other people for him anyway he put up these chimpanzee you know uh a concept art for the new jokers attraction mm -hmm. and they announced that it's going to be done in phases so the ride's going to stay open while they while they fix it and yeah put these new story elements in but it sounds like there's a quite a bit of story elements being changed i don't know how it's going to work but anyway he did this, and then right before that um the my disney experience app had put in character bios for the characters, um, remember we showed you the picture of the poll before, let me see this, I'm taking over. We showed you the pictures of the, well, the poll before I have it right here. We have a picture of the poll here where it used to be this like a couple guys up a pole and a rhino and a hyena. Well, now we have five people on the pole with the redhead on top because that's where redheads like to be on top of poles. Um, <laughs> that's why we're stereotyped the way we are. And then we have all these characters. Um, so we have backstories for every one of these. Um, and, it, and it hits check boxes. It's like, it's like diversity bingo. <laughs> um, and I have no problem with that. What I have a problem with is, you know, we don't get backstories for other characters and other attractions to make sure you know everything about them, to make sure you know that they're diverse. All 999 ghosts in the Haunted Mansion need their own backstory. Actually, they, did they try doing that with the books? They had they books. Had some of them had backstories, to, yeah. but... Yeah, so anyway, we have backstories for these characters. Of course we do, because it goes with Diversity Inclusion Initiative. First of all, we met Alberta Falls. Now, you can explain the C, the Society of Explorers and Adventures. Yeah, so this is um, kind of cool if, if you follow theme park lore. I won't go into a lot of detail on it, but Disney parks around the world uh, are all kind of connected via this um, 
this organization, uh, think of it as like, I, guess, I don't know, I'm kind of thinking like the Avengers, but they're all like... like uh, it's like a steampunky old-timey type thing. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And they have different characters and different... You know, um, if you look into the Society of Explorers and Adventures, you go out there and Google it. They've got different characters and different attractions uh, around the world, different parks, and they're all interconnected. They all belong to this society. And there is like a story there. And Right. And now it turns out that Disney Plus, it sounds like, is going to try to leverage this into some kind of series. Yeah. So we already know that. So it m- kind of makes sense why they can write backstories. It could possibly be because they're going to use it for the show. Mm-hmm. And that would be why they're pushing it. And in that regard, okay, I have no problem with it. Um, but, you know... We already we already had this Alberta Falls who is like connected to this to the sea through her I think her dad Albert Gra- Falls or her yeah. grandpa it might have been her grandpa. grandpa yep yeah her grandpa so we already have her and, and we always know she's from India so we have to have our, our a woman in charge you know in, in you know, she's the woman in charge from India so we already had her so now we got a new character bias so if you go to the poll <laughs> one, you go on the poll the one closest to the rhino which is the white guy yeah. Um, he was a dumb white guy, apparently. Is Felix Penchman the eighth? Patch. Or that was that the eighth? I'm sorry, I can't do math. I can't do things. Thirteenth. Thirteenth. Yeah, he's right? unlucky. It's not a V. It's an X. He's 13th. unlucky. Yeah, right. It's, okay, I didn't even catch that before. But he's the one white. He's the, the, the white dude. Obviously, the unlucky idiot. He's so, patch colored. That's right. He's patch. He's Patchman, like Peach. He's Patch. Like, Look at how how diverse and inclusive they are. The first guy at the bottom of the pole is the skipper. And he's an unexpected turn of events. Alberta had no choice but to ask this dumbass white guy to lead the first boat tour with VIP guests. Well, VIP guests are all her friends, by the way. Unfortunately, his trademark back lo- bad luck has followed him into the jungle. Because thirteenth. And and you know, Petchman. Petch. He's like, Petch colored. Peach Petch. She's Petch. And then we got the next person, um, you know, on the pole above him. So basically, Felix is looking up this guy's rear end. Is Doctor Leonard Moss, and above him Moss is Doctor Leonard Moss, an acclaimed Canadian botanist who is a, a is black, having successfully photographed and cataloged every plant plant in the frigid Nova Scotia Peninsula. He decided his next photo excursion should be to a warmer climate. And looking up her the next person's pants would be that would be he would look it up Rosa Soto Dominguez's butt, and she is a celebrated Mexican artist. She a Latinx artist. Um, she Latinx? Known in the art world as La Rosa. She was Frida. on her way back. Yeah, back to yeah, right, Frida. Mexico City from her latest gallery open in Paris, where she received a special invitation from her close friend Alberta. Is this like a more diverse Gilligan's Island? I don't know. Because I always wondered how that how the uh, Howls wound up on the same boat as Ginger and Marianne. Like how I think they explained that Marianne like won a contest or something because the Howls and Ginger were rich. I don't know. I never really watched it, so I don't know. She looks forward to her reunion in Adventureland when she when she can see Alberta, when she can paint some exotic wildlife, especially given her fascination with rhinos. I was luck would have it she ended up a little clue, too close and personal with one. And then we have Dr. Is it Khan? How do you say his name? Chunosuke? Yeah, I don't Ch- want to say Chunosuke? it wrong, so we'll go with that. He is the preeminent entomologist and famed Society of Explorers and Adventures member. All these people are, I think it's going to tie into the show. He traveled to the jungle on a mission to find new specimens for his world-class collection of insects. As a mire of Dr. Fall's legacy, he is hopeful that his younger, the younger Falls would be able to lead, which is her grandpa, to lead the legendary, lead him to the legendary... Mermacolian lion of ants? The lion of ants. But so far he's not able to find butterflies, boring. mosquitoes, and rhino. This is boring. It's really boring. The Jungle Cruise is about jokes, and this is so boring. Oh, it gets better. So we have all these people. Like I hope we have our white guy, our Latina. We have our Asian man. Um, we have our black man, and now we're going to go to um, our Irish chick because it's the redhead. Because you know if she's a redhead. Of course she's Irish. Puffin Murphy. So we got Siobhan Puffin Murphy. Who's all the way from the the small island of Dingle, Ireland? Because you know Dingle, Ireland. Because redheads obviously are all Irish. You know yeah, they live on the Dingles. Um, that's right. And she paid a surprise visit to her distant cousin twice removed on her father's side, Alberta. She's nicknamed Puffin because of her love for puffin birds that nest in the rocks for a seaside hometown. Is this like the uh, you know we had in Star Wars? Because oh, were God. they puffins, and that's why they they yeah, made the um, the porgs. porgs. They were yeah. puffins. Yeah, they like CG them. In the pores. Many believe that this is pu- that it was Puffin's love for exotic birds that drove Skipper Felix to get a little too close to an ox pecker. 
you know what? Leave it to the redhead to get too close to the oxpecker. I'm just saying. Persian and particularly grumpy hippo. I'm sorry. Am I the grumpy hippo? I need a moment. Okay. Anyway, this is way too much information and really boring. Look, the Jungle Cruise is a jokey ride. It's meant to be lame jokes and animals. This does. This sounds to me like they're actually going to try to make it serious because we got it. We can't offend anybody. Like they don't even want you to offend the damn chimps. They were talking about. I have that quote in here. It was. I have it. Um, Okay, they're talking about that. And they said it was Walt Disney Imagineering Creative Portfolio Executive Chris Beatty in a D23 interview said, when introducing new elements, even animals, we make sure they're done in a respectful way. We reached out to Dr. Mark Penning and his team at Animal Kingdom and, and said, look, we have these chimpanzees that are coming into this new world. I want them to have fun with them. How do we make sure it's done in an authentic way for the chimpanzees? We want to have fun, but we're not making fun of the animals. His team had great insights, and it really elevated that new scene. Because, you know, when you ride this ride, guys, you're, you're allowed to laugh at their situation, laugh at the different, you know, the different diversity people having a rhino horn almost up their ass, but you're not allowed to make fun of the animatronics because the animatronic feelings matter. The only guy that's got the horn up his ass is the white guy. Well, he's the idiot because you know, yeah, the bad the black white moron, the... you know. But, and then the redhead's at the top <sighs> of the pole. <laughs> That, that's where her face belongs, yeah, at the top of the pole. Um, this is going to be boring as hell. I, I just have this, I have this really, really bad feeling that the Jungle Cruise is going to be completely nerfed and turned into a lesson in uh, how fragile nature is and how fragile these these people on the diversity pole are. I, you know, um, look, I have no problem with. I, 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 I think it's cool they're updating it. It needs updated. I have no problem. I have no problem with the putting chimpanzees in there like they're taking over the ship. That's funny. Uh, I have no problem with that. I have no problem with these characters. What I have a problem with is they're putting an awful lot of thought and effort into characters. People are going to ride the boat. Unless you're a huge Disney fan, you're not going to care. The only thing I can think of is they're going to spin this for that Disney Plus show. Yeah. Otherwise, why put so much effort into everybody having their own backstory? You have to know what, what part of the world they're from. We have, it's like, you know, it's like we got white guy, Latina, black man, redhead. I like how redheads get their own classification. And Asian guy, bingo! Yeah, Bingo. It's, it's just sounds so boring. Like, I understand Disney does put a lot of detail into the backstories on attractions normally, but this this does feel like it's got an ulterior motive, whether well, it's the diversity and inclusion thing or a show or I'm really something. thinking it's a show because I'm thinking of the characters they did give them more backstory to and they usually are tied into C. Yeah. Um. So I'm, yeah. I'm thinking they're doing this for the show. Um, cause C has always been diverse. I just don't understand. They're like, they're making sure that you understand it's all the diversity and inclusion initiative, diversity, and inclusion, diversity, and inclusion, but it's always been. And the C, and, and if you look at the, the people that are part of the C group, they always have been before this. Yeah. But now we have to really call attention to it. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk that, that Disney and they're doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on diversity this is why splash this is why they're saying splash mountain is getting a refurb even though they really don't have the money to do it to turn it into princess and the frog i think it's because they know they're going to sell more princess merch than they are I, yeah Br I rabbit think, merch I think it's about selling princess stuff, you know but there's always there's always a method to their madness it's like oh we'll look like we're diverse but in reality it's all about cashing in Pretty yeah. much. I mean, our daughter is a huge fan of both. Splash Mountain is one of her favorite things. But she also is a huge fan of Princess and the Frog. And she's just like, you know, okay, you know, I, I get it. And, I, and she's fine with it. But a lot of people aren't. And they actually have more people who are against refurbing it than they do ha that are for it. You know, of course, we've got the usual outlets coming out. You know, Disney's Jungle Cruise ride revamps the women of color as central character and more diverse ensemble. If you go to the C page, you'll find there's a lot of women. And they've, they've been for years. I mean, this is not new. Disney Parks to update Jungle Cruise ride to reflect value and diversity. No one's mentioning the fact that they had they're about chimpanzee rights. And yeah. authentic chimpanzee representation. Authentic chimpanzee. We are the only channel who's been covering that. <sighs> Get with the program. Get on our level, media. Th this is this is the direction Disney's going. Look, we said before, they're going to go through and they're going to audit all of their attractions that, that have problematic elements. And I'm not saying they can't update attractions or whatever, but it's I think it's going to be done in such a ham-fisted, in-your-face way 
that they're actually going to strip a lot of the fun and charm out of the rides. Well, the proposed Spaceship Earth, and they kept saying, oh, it's nothing. We're just adding a story light and some story elements. But when you look at some of the changes of the concept art, they dropped before the closure. Uh, there was going to be a lot more change than they said that there was going to be. They kept, oh, no, no, it's fine. We're just adding a few things. Nothing's going to change, really. And then it was, no, it was going to be drastically changed. Like, you go into the ancient Egypt, and it was like a Cleopatra figure there instead of the ones that were there before. So you know it was going to be, you know, the whole way through, you're gonna, they're going to make some strong changes. Whether or not it's historically accurate doesn't matter. It's just about representation. History is whatever Disney says it is. Yeah, and in some places <laughs> so, in the world, history is different than others because they had a different experience than we did here. Lemmings just throw themselves off the cliff for yeah, no Disney reason. Yeah, Disney has no idea how that we happened. We have no idea how that happened. Um, no nope, idea. Nope. Uh, before we wrap this up, I do want to take a, a moment to, I do appreciate their concept art, though. Yeah, Disney nice. always has amazing concept art. And the, the, whoever the artists are, they usually have on these pieces do a fantastic job because it's not their fault they have to, you know, <laughs> that they have to do stuff. But I mean, the art is usually really, really, really well done. Yeah. And I appreciate the fact that that, that Imagineering put the redhead on top of the pole. And then I appreciate that redheads were included and that redheads were actually considered a whole checkbox all to themselves. There you go. So I do appreciate that. That's okay. They'll get rid of her in the next refurb. That's right. They always do. <laughs> All right, so we got to wrap this one up. Yep. Okay, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.